Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. It is fighting game Thursday once again, so it's time to look at the history of yet another game from the genre. Since I've been doing these historical retrospectives, I have been getting a lot of requests recently to cover different games from within the gaming niche. One game that keeps coming up time and time again is of course Rival Schools, and it even topped my community poll with regards to which game you, the audience, currently want to see featured on this channel the most. So, without further ado, this ladies and gentlemen is the mad story of Capcom's Rival Schools, and why this game is so important. Yeah. The year is 1997. We are at that pivotal time in history where the majority of gaming companies are using a great deal of their financial resources to pour into the development of 3D polygon based games. We looked at this trend as recently as this Sunday when we covered the arcade release of the SNK Hyper Neo Geo 64 arcade boards. Unfortunately for SNK, the jump to 3D was a rocky one for the company and results were not financially fruitful. Gaming was changing at such a rapid rate at the time. Many development houses could not keep up with the trend and lack the skills or hardware necessary to be able to deliver the goods. Bad 3D games featuring high-end intellectual properties were popping up everywhere, with some really notable falls from grace, such as Earthworm Jim 3D, which was so bad that it looked like it had killed off the franchise for good. Capcom, on the other hand, decided against instantly throwing all of their efforts into the 3D polygon ring and instead would continue to make many 2D sprite based games. This would mean that Street Fighter 3, the company's long awaited sequel to Street Fighter 2, would remain in 2D. With the game's general producer, Norotaki Funamizu, admitting that we feel that 3D is not really suitable for head to head fighting. And, to be frank, Capcom doesn't really have the techniques to display high quality graphics in 3D. Despite this very statement from Capcom existing, all we had to do was look around at the time to be able to see that Soul Blade, Tekken 2 and 3 were all on the market and all three of these titles were hugely popular head to head fighting games, which featured 3D polygons. So the part regarding Capcom not having the techniques available to display high quality 3D graphics appears to be the truer part of that statement. In terms of fighting games, on the 2D side of things Capcom would continue to release enhanced versions of Street Fighter 3 and Street Fighter Alpha. In addition to this, they would also continue to release new entries within the Capcom vs series and would even release Darkstalkers 3 by 1997. Away from Capcom's biggest fighting game cash cows, it does not mean that the company would not begin to test the water developing games featuring the new trendy 3D graphical styles. The first of these would arrive in arcades in 1996 with the arrival of Star Gladiator Episode 1 for Final Crusade. This 3D weapons based fighting game would be programmed to run on PlayStation based ZM1 arcade hardware as opposed to the usual CP boards developed by Capcom themselves. The game marks Capcom's first ever in-house polygonal fighting game and would see a release in Japan in a similar time frame to when Street Fighter 3 would debut. The game's arcade version, along with its PlayStation port, were both relatively well received, which I guess must have influenced the company somewhat in taking further steps in the 3D direction. Around this time, Street Fighter EX would also debut in the arcades, a 3D polygon based fighting game featuring Capcom's biggest IP. The catch with this one though, was that it was not developed by Capcom, but instead the company were only the publisher. The task at hand with this one was outsourced to the development house, Arika, which was ran by former Capcom employees who had worked on Street Fighter 2 previously. A whole calendar year after the release of all of these games, Rival Schools would debut in Japanese arcades in November of 1997, using the Sony ZN2 hardware. If Street Fighter EX was the game that brought Street Fighter to the realm of 3D, then you could argue that mechanically, Rival Schools was Capcom's 3D Capcom vs game. The game had originally entered development when director Hideki Itsuno wanted to make a 60 frames per second polygon based fighting game, 
as Capcom's earlier 3D title, Star Gladiator, was only set to 30 frames per second. The working title for the game was originally Justice Fist, and featured a generic story about fighters coming together from around the world to prove who was the strongest. Hideki showed this concept to others at Capcom, however, they were underwhelmed, so he would go back to the drawing board to try and come back with something more interesting. The final concept would introduce the high school setting, with Hideki's thought track being that practically everyone has had school experiences. So I guess the rest from there is history. Anyway, let's check out this game's intro. So, from the game's brief introduction, we can instantly identify a few similarities between this game and Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, released earlier that same year. Capcom's characters are all depicted using an anime art style, and more importantly, the game seems to heavily feature air combat, but we will discuss more on these points very shortly. Upon inserting your first credit into one of these cabinets, you reach the player select screen prompting you to choose from a selection of different characters. All characters are represented via anime illustrations, rather than with 3D graphics at this point. Upon selecting your character, the game will prompt you to pick another additional fighter, which means you guessed it. Like the Marvel and Capcom vs series, this game consists of tag team matches players, which meant on release, this was Teddy Long's favourite polygon based fighting game but we will discuss more about this in detail later. Holla holla holla. I guess we should talk about the game's story, along with the characters found within it. The game takes place in a fictional Japanese city, known as Aoharu, a location where mysterious kidnappings and unprovoked attacks are taking place. Victims consist of several students and staff members from local high schools throughout the area. With all of this going on, a selection of students from each school seek out to investigate who is behind the crimes. The original arcade version of the game features 16 characters including the two bosses. These characters are representatives of five different high schools. It is reported that with the original arcade cabinet, a player selective team of two characters must be from the same school. However, arcade owners could enter a special operating code which removed the game's story and cutscenes to allow any combination of characters. Through this same method, the game's two boss characters can also be made selectable. So now, let us run through the rival schools, and look at the characters found within each one. First up, we have Teo High School, offering three playable students. Teo is a standard small-scale academy for carefree students. The school's fighters include Batsu, who is described as a hot-blooded, impulsive and foul-mouthed teenager, who possesses a strong sense of justice and a kind heart. This transfer student is positioned as the star and main protagonist of the rival school's game. Next up from Teo we have Hinata, a young girl who is passionate about martial arts, who tried to rally up the students of the school to take up arms with her in the fight against the unknown attacker. Finally, we have Kaiosuke, who I briefly spotlighted last week due to his presence in Capcom vs SNK2. He volunteers to help Batsu and Hinata with their investigation, however, there are further story twists involved as the game progresses. The next school to touch on is Gorin High, 
whose students focus on elite athletic training. The school's fighters consist of Shoma, a baseball master and a very strong fighter, Natsu, a volleyball player because nothing says tough like volleyball, and Roberto, a cool-tempered soccer player who helps defuse his classmates when they get into arguments. The third school is Pacific High School for foreign exchange students from the USA, which I guess was featured in a cheap tacky effort for Capcom to try to appeal to the largest market in the world. The three characters reportedly planned to return home to the United States, but were ordered by this character Roy's father to help investigate. Roy is a self-proclaimed outsider, who later in the game is forced to rethink his feelings on Japan and its people. He is joined by the big busted Tiffany, who uses boxing as her fighting style, and Bowman, a large lad with a non-violent nature who agrees to help his classmates regardless. The fourth school is known as Guido High, which is reportedly full of gangs and delinquents. In this school we have Akira, who wears a full set of biker gear, Edge, who is a little twat who is known for picking fights and pulling out knives, and Gang, a member of a gang who simply lets his muscles do the talking, which makes him much less of a dick than Edge. Finally, we have Justice High, a super elite academy with a rigid and mysterious curriculum. This is a school rumoured to be housing the perpetrator who kidnapped the missing students and teachers. Out of its selectable fighters, it includes Hideo, a language teacher who is looking to get to the bottom of things, who is joined by Kayoko, the school's nurse. Also hailing from this school, we have the game's boss characters. The first of these is Reizo, the school's head teacher who is responsible for many of the characters' misfortunes throughout the game's story. Reizo is positioned as the game's main antagonist, however truths are later unearthed to reveal he is not the main villain of the story. The real final boss of the game is Hayo, who happens to be the head teacher's nephew. However, I will not spoil the game any further, in case you want to play through this yourself. In addition to the other playable characters, Sakura from the Street Fighter Alpha series also makes an appearance in the game as a secret unlockable character. She was apparently included as insurance due to the worries of bad sales. Capcom were hoping the Not A Street Fighter would further grab fans' attention. In all honesty, Sakura is beyond the perfect fit for this game. She is a Japanese high school student, so generally fits with the theme of the game anyway. But to add to this, her character design is based on the Japanese superhero schoolgirl archetype, much like Sailor Moon. When you bear in mind that the game features the same air combat as the Marvel vs Capcom series, she is the perfect fit and addition to the game's character lineup. Now we have got through the characters, let's start talking about gameplay, starting with tag teaming. The tagging mechanic does work differently from games within the vs series, and unfortunately you cannot simply switch between your two fighters with a tap of the button like you can with the 2D games. In rival schools, fights take place one-on-one -on -one between a combatant from each team, and victory is achieved through winning two rounds out of three. After a round, win or lose, the player has a choice between which of their two characters they would like to fight with within the following round. The main function of having two characters is that team-up attacks can be performed, moves that feature both of your fighters double-teaming an opponent. The team attacks can be executed when two levels of vigour are filled, where a special moves are also performable only costing one level of vigour. The game also features a combo system that functions very similar to the one found within the Versus series, where each character has launch attacks that allow for the use of air combos. In regards to the team attacks we touched on, some of these double team moves are not just attacks, but some feature as healing move combinations instead. The Vigor Gauge itself can actually be filled up to 9 levels, offering the opportunity to do multiple combinations of special and team attacks back to back. In terms of the game's controls, Rival Schools is played using two buttons for punching and two for kicking, with a light and heavy attack for each. This 4 attack button control scheme is more simplified than with some of the 6 button control schemes found with many other Capcom fighters, but works ideal for the Sony PlayStation's controller which would make sense considering that the system the game was always intended to be ported to was the PlayStation, with this being programmed for Sony ZN hardware after all. 
I guess mechanically, it is also worth mentioning that the game features a few defensive techniques that complement the character's offensive actions. This includes a technique known as tardy counters, which are similar to alpha counters found within the alpha series. These allow players to counter attacks from blocking positions. Alpha counters from the alpha series can only be used to counter certain special moves, where as tardy counters can work against hard, special or super attacks. The game also features attack counters which allow players to cancel incoming hits via timing their own hit with their opponent's attacks. These also offer an extra level of vigour when achieved. So that pretty much sums up all there is to know about the original arcade release of Rival Schools and how the game functioned. But what did critics of the time think of the game? Well, let us find out. Next Generation Magazine would write Japanese schoolgirls anyone? If you like them, they're a big part of the premise behind Capcom's new polygonal fighter, rival schools united by fate. Their fighting scheme is still Street Fighter based, which helps make rival schools fun for any old Capcom fan. Graphically, rival schools is stupendous, with polygonal anime style character designs, clear attention to detail, and a wide playing field that's caught dramatically by a moving camera. Rival Schools is a decent game, but it ain't no Street Fighter, or even an X-Men for that matter. To be honest, Rival Schools is a button masher, but it's good. Clean button mashing, packaged a little differently. Next Generation would give the arcade game 3 out of 5 stars, however sadly, this was the only arcade review I could dig up, which is often the case when searching for reviews of arcade games from the time of this game's release. Being a game running off Sony ZN hardware, the game's next stop would be the Sony PlayStation, with the game slowly being released worldwide starting out in Japan in July of 1998. The port offered even more than the initial arcade game. The PlayStation version of the title would come spread across two CDs. On these discs, the first would include the original arcade game and standard modes you would find in most home conversions of fighting games. The game was enhanced with a new animated introduction, end sequences and a voiceover was added to the single player story mode. Two more characters were even added to the game including Hei Yato, a hot headed PE teacher and Diago, another teenage delinquent and gang member. That was all just on the first disc though. Disc 2 would be known as the Evolution Disc, featuring even more gameplay modes. This would include a range of mini-games based on student activities and would even include a character creation mode in the form of a dating sim. Through this mode, you could create your own student, go through an academic year and develop friendships with any of the characters from the main game. This mode would shed further light on existing characters and their backgrounds. If one year in this mode is completed, the custom character could then be used in the arcade mode. Pretty innovative for what was essentially a fighting game, eh? Sadly, this character creation mode was abandoned outside of Japan, due to Capcom claiming it would have taken too much of an effort to translate it all from Japanese to English, especially when you take into account that even now, dating sims are pretty much still a foreign concept to the West. So, it is not surprising that this element of the game got dropped. Still though, Western releases would still receive the Evolution Disc, and other extra modes were still included. Westerners did not get the complete short end of the stick though, as instead the international version was given its own quirks. The designs and facial expressions in the Japanese creation mode were instead used to make more extra characters for the game. Not too bad at all really, who needs a dating sim anyway? Past this point in typical Capcom fashion, the game would receive an updated version, much like there are millions of versions of Street Fighter 2. The next version of the game featured two additional characters, Ran Hibiki, Teiyu High School's newspaper club photographer, and Nagari Namukawa, a swimmer who studies at Gorin High School. In addition to this, the game would feature a new version of the school sim mode and feature more mini-games. So now let us take a look at how the home version of this game was received by critics. GameSpot would state, The graphics are pretty faithful to the arcade version, although the characters are a bit more blocky than their arcade counterparts. Also, some of the sprite effects such as explosions and fire look a little bad. 
The soundtrack is just about what you'd expect from a fighting game and sounds very Japanese. I wouldn't call Rival Schools a serious fighting game, but it's different enough to reel in those of us tired of Capcom's endless string of Street Fighter clones. All the additional modes help a lot on the multiplayer side of things, keeping the game fresh for a few extra months. If you're looking for an easy to pick up fighting game that puts a slightly new spin on the old fighting genre, Rival Schools fits the bill pretty well. IGN would add to this by stating, Rival Schools is a great example of how well Capcom can port over any of its fighting titles. The game maintains a solid frame rate with barely a missed piece of animation, and its characters all respond with near immediate moves. For Capcom fans, Rival Schools is not a letdown in the least, and it introduces as many as 20 characters into Capcom's character vault. Rival Schools is a high production affair with excellent looking graphics and a solid set of fighting techniques. Characters are relatively well balanced and the sidestepping works well to counter hasty opponents. So, as you can see the game was fairly well received in its day, getting solid 8 out of 10 review scores across the board. But an important question to pose as well now is how has the game aged today? Well, I guess it all depends on whether or not you can put up with extremely dated polygonal graphics. Sadly, aesthetically, the game has not aged quite as well as the likes of the Street Fighter Alpha series or the Capcom vs games, as early 3D does not offer the same appeal as polished refined 2D. Still though, from all the comments I have had asking me to cover the history of this game, it is clearly an important game that holds a place in the heart of many. I guess it simply did a lot of things right back in the day. It was really Capcom's first ever impressive 3D polygon based fighting game, after initially testing the water with the less refined Star Gladiator prior. This was also the first polygonal game to feature gameplay similar to that found in the Capcom vs series, whereas other popular games of this graphical style of the time mostly featured a gameplay style more similar to the more basic Street Fighter 2. To top this off, in terms of storytelling, I feel like the team behind this game made more of an effort to focus on the in-game story of this one than with any fighting game made prior and the amount of minigames and extras that Evolution Disc offered complements this factor strongly. Rival Schools really is a special little game that did a lot to stand out from the pack, and with all of this in mind it is no surprise that this title was the most popular Capcom game at the September 1997 Jammer Show, drawing much larger crowds than Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. The game followed graphical trends of the time, somewhat maintained a lot of traditional Capcom fighting game style, and innovated through great character design, storytelling and additional features. This ladies and gentlemen is why this game is important, and why one day it would even receive a true sequel. Which we may also cover on here if people enjoy this upload. Anyway, that was the mad story of Capcom's Rival Schools. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this game and why not share some of your experiences you've had with it. Which fighting game would you like me to cover on here in the future? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you are new here, do not forget to like, comment and subscribe for multiple videos a week covering various facets of gaming history. Finally, my channel is partially funded by the delicious donations I receive via Patreon. Patrons can earn a credit and a shout out at the end of these productions. These people make working full time on this ridiculous platform just a little bit less scary. So I would like to thank you all very much for that. So huge shout outs to Cole Johnson, JD Robin, Sebastian Veles, Since Spaces, Andrew Brzezanski, Asobi Quang DX, Michael Baker, Tom Elliott, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Daniel Daly, Retroversion.com, House of the Ted, Dan Barlow Jr., Joel, and all of my other patrons. Yeah, cheerio.